Welcome to my Mr. 2 Mega 65 tutorial series. My aim is to explain the basics of the M2M framework using an example core port. If you don't know what the M2M framework is, please take a look at my Mr. 2 Mega 65 explained video. In short, the M2M framework is a hardware abstraction layer with which Mr. Cores can be adapted to the Mega 65 hardware. To be able to follow this guide, you need a Mega 65, a PC, and ideally a JTAG interface. You should also have some knowledge of programming and electronic design. I am using Linux as my PC operating system for this tutorial, because that's what I'm most familiar with, and as it is freely available. However, it shouldn't be a problem to follow the instructions using a different operating system. The individual episodes of this tutorial build on each other, so you should start with the first episode. That's this one. So let's start. To develop a core for your Mega 65, you need the Xilinx Vivado development environment. This is used to synthesize the actual design from the hardware description language HDL and to implement it for the Arctic 7 FPGA. The result of this process is the bitstream that is then transferred to the FPGA to create the circuits. The Vivado software is free for personal use but requires registration. You will also be asked for your address because of software export restrictions. The JTAG interface to the Mega65 is a useful tool for developing and debugging FPGA bitstreams, but some basic steps can be performed without this interface. For example, by transferring the core to the Mega65 with an SD card. But if you plan to develop or port one or more cores, you should definitely have this interface to make debugging and development easier. First, we go to the Vivado website and there to Company, Support, Download and Licensing. You can now see the latest versions of Vivado, but we will be using an older version, which is currently being used for the development of Mega65 as well as by the M2M team. This can be found under Vivado Archive. We will install version 2019.2. The first entry is an update that is not required. We go straight to the second entry with the no modification date of November 12, 2019. Here we can see three files, two installers, one for Windows, one for Linux, as well as a complete package with all the components. The installer loads the selected components during installation. The problem I stumbled upon is that Vivado requires some older libraries on Linux. And if these are not installed, the installation may fail and the next attempt will download everything again. This means that you not only need an incredible long time, but also end up downloading more data than if you would have used the complete package. But for Windows, the installer is probably the best way to go. I list all the required compatibility libraries in the video description, but this may vary depending on the Linux distribution. I'm using Arc Linux, but package names from other distributions will be similar. So now we choose the full package and we will end up on the sign up page. Here you can log in with your Xilinx account, or if you don't have one, you can create a new one. When the restrict, uh, registration has been carried out, the next step is the software export page already mentioned, which must also be filled out completely and truthfully. By clicking on download, we will start the download and have to wait a bit because it's 27 gigabytes to download. I already downloaded the package, so I cancel the download now and we go on with the package I have on my hard drive. We have two options for the installation. Either the installation takes place as a user or we will install Vivado system-wide. Since most people probably only use the computer for themselves, the user installation is the easiest way. I will therefore explain this. First, we need to unpack the installation package. Attention, the package is already several gigabytes in size and unpacked data takes up at least, uh, again, as much space. The installation requires even more. All in all, around 85 gigabytes 
is required during the installation. This can be reduced by removing the archive after unpacking, which saves around 27 gigabytes. So keep an eye on disk space. Luckily, Vivado installation tool will also help you with this. In the extracted directory, there's a script called xsetup which will start the installation. First we are greeted with uh, some warning about non-standard uh, Linux distributions, which we click away. You might not get this if you are using one of the mainstream um, Linux distributions. Um, and now Vivado asks us if we would rather install the latest version. In principle, you could do that, but I recommend staying with version 2019.2, which is also used by the developer teams. If this tutorial is already very old when you look at it, it's 2022 now, it is best to ask in the Discord if this is still the case. So we choose continue. We land on a welcome screen and are greeted by a few warnings and explanations. Below, some settings can be changed with the preferences, but the uh, defaults are okay as they are, so we can choose next. Um, if you did choose the installer instead of the complete package, you would have now to uh, you would have now enter your Xilinx login data. Um, and confirm it with next so um, the installer can log into the web page and download the installation packages needed. Um, here we then have to confirm a few things. There's no way around it, so read everything and click on agree. On the next screen, um, we have to uh, choose which version of Vivado we like to install. And we will choose the first one, the Webpack, which is no cost, device limited. And uh, this requires no additional licenses to be bought. On the next screen, um, we can choose which packages we like to install. For the Mega 65, we only need the ser Series 7 FPGAs. So we can deselect SOC and Ultrascale to save uh, about six gigabyte of space. In the next step, we now have to select the installation uh, location. Um, I will create um, a directory called Xilinx and use this for the installation. And as you can see, Xilinx will tell us, uh, the installer will tell us how much space it will need for the installation. And uh, on the right side, we can choose if we like to have menu entries created and if we have, would like to have desktop shortcuts. I don't use the desktop shortcuts, so I deselect them. And finally, we see uh, again everything which is now going to happen. And then we can click on install to start the installation. And this takes a little while. And the installation has successfully completed. So we can click on OK and yeah, setup is done. Now let's take a look at Vivado. I start Vivado by choosing it from the file menu. And after a while, it's Java, it will start up. And Greet us with the project creation quick start page. You can see a lot of uh, recent of my projects here um, because I already worked with Vivado and it reads my preferences. This part will be empty for you. And yeah, that's it. Vivado is running and we have everything done we needed to do. So this was the first preparation to get started with Mega65 core development. You should now have everything ready to follow the rest of the series. If you have a JTAG interface, you can find a link to a Filehost article in the comments 
explaining the setup and configuration. There need some dip switches to be switched and USB cables to be plugged. Nothing too complicated. If you have questions or corrections, please add them to the comments of the video, so I can answer them for everyone. For more complicated problem solving, you will find a bunch of people on the Mega65 Discord always willing to help. Thanks for watching. Bye.